What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today we are starting with the RPG tutorial series. I am very very excited. We will begin with the base of the locomotion and we will start setting up the blend spaces, animation blueprint, procedural leaning and more. We will set up two states, an art and crouch. So we can start to get the feel of the character's movement and we can add a stop animation to make it more fluid and procedural leaning as I mentioned before to make it feel more vivid. This video might be a bit longer than expected or compared to others, but I wanted to get this locomotion aspects done in this first video. This is only the start of the core elements of the locomotion system. So with time, we will add the Assassin's Creed parkour elements, such as vaulting, etc. It's going to be a very easy video to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so let's create a new UE project. I will be using the latest version of Unreal Engine 5.1.1 and I do recommend that you use the latest version too or at least my one. If you are still in UE 5.0, it should still be okay, but always try to use the latest one, which again, I will be using 5.1.1, which I actually just released a few days ago. So we're gonna be using the third person template as it is a great starting point for our RPG game. We'll be using only blueprints, so make sure that blueprints is selected. Now the other options, you can customize this as we go. I will be using desktop, maximum, sorry content and ray tracing off, but you can change this later on, so it doesn't really matter. Go ahead and choose the file location for your part, and then we can put a name. In my case, let's do for example, RPG um, underscore tutorial series. And as we cannot put any spaces, we need to put underscores. And that's pretty much it. Again, make sure blueprint selected and third person and your you know, good location and the name. And now we can go ahead and click create. All right, so project created. So let's get started by importing the animations that I have left in the description. There are some basic locomotion animations from Lyra's template. So they're completely free and available from Epic Games. But because it is too much of a fossil to you know create a lyra proid and import them one by one and it will you know fill up a lot of your space on this on your computer what i did was just export the ones that we need and left them in the description so let's go ahead and load them and now we can go ahead and import them so what we're going to do is go into the characters folder and then what i'm going to do is create a new folder and this will be rpg underscore character when we have a proper name for our character, if you want to, we can uh, later on change the name. Let's go ahead and enter, and now we want to create a new folder for these animations. Let's go ahead and enter. And now, let's go ahead and open the folder. So I don't know if I would have made a zip, but if so, just unzip them. Now select all of them, and just drag them into the content browser. So now this window will pop up. So first of all, let's go up here and reset them to default, so we have all these settings like normal. So we have to go ahead and select Skeleton. In our case, it will be the SK Mannequin, the normal UE5 Mannequin. Now, don't make the mistake of going ahead and selecting the Alt UE4 one. We want to just get the normal uh, SK Mannequin. And now we can go ahead and just say Import All. And now, with some seconds, all the animations should be in our content browser, in our product, and we can start creating the blend spaces and stuff. And there we go. Ctrl Shift S to save everything. And now you will see that we have the animations really cool so basically what we're going to do is create a new folder and it's going to be a locomotion so in our case uh for now what we're going to do is also use the template default animations so in our case for the locomotion animations there's only two new over here which are idle break and a block stop so let's go ahead and drag them and move them here now we're going to create a new folder it's going to be crouched and now we want to so that these two folders and sorry animations i moved them into the folder let's go ahead and enter into locomotion and what we want to do is start creating the animation blend place go ahead and right click into animation and i go into the legacy and we will set the blend space 1d so what is a blend space well let's say it is like a timeline where you can put different animations and depending on a value you can transition smoothly depending um, on, on on them so in our case we want to change the animations depending on our character's speed and 1d is just just one direction okay 
So let's go ahead and select it. And again, we have to select the SK mannequin. And now we want to change the name into be locomotion blend space 1D. Let's go ahead and open this up. Put it over here. So now the horizontal axis will basically be the timeline. So we want to change the name into be speed. And then the minimum will be zero and the maximum will be 500. The maximum value will be the maximum speed that a character will be allowed to walk or run. And where I'm getting this value, where if we go into the uh, third person character blueprint and go into the character movement component, you will see that currently it is set as 500 in max walk speed. So that's why I'm getting this value. If you were to change the max value of that speed, you have to change here. All right, so now we can go and drag our animations. So we need to go into an asset browser. Now, if you don't see it, you can just go into Windows and it will be here. Great, so let's go ahead and get our in-place animation. Let's go ahead and drag it and put it onto the left. Now, you're probably wondering why we are not starting on the idle animation. And it is because we're going to later make all the scheme and transition it from the animation blueprint instead. So we want to start already this animation blueprint with a little bit of speed. OK, it will make sense later. OK, and why we're doing this. But we want to get the in-place animation because it is the, the slowest walk animation. It's like just tipping over here. Now we want to find the walk animation and it will be the MM walk forward. And we want to put it exactly at the middle. And now we want to search for the run animation and it's going to be the MM run forward. It's going to put it onto the right. Now, if I hold control, you'll see that I can preview the difference on the speed and how as the velocity increases, the character will change the animation. And it just looks really, really cool. Now I have a detail to turn on this. So if you want, you can check that out anyway. So let's go ahead and save it and now we can close it. Let's go back into our folder, which was RPG character animations. And now let's go ahead and go into the animation blueprint. So we have to create a new one. Right click animation blueprint. Again, we want to select the skeleton. And now it's going to be ABP symbolizing animation blueprint underscore and then RPG RPG there we go, character. I want to open this guy up. Great. So the first thing that we want to do is create a new state machine. Let's go ahead and right click state machine. And there we go. So now we select it, we can change the name and this will be our locomotion. So the state machine will be like a graph scheme where we can basically put all of our animations in. Let's go ahead and enter and drag it. And now we can create a new state. So this state will be an idle. So basically when our character is not moving. Let's go ahead and double click and now we can go again into the asset browser and just search for idle. And I'm going to use the new one that we imported, which was idle break. So I'll drag it and plug it in. Now, because this idle will be in loop, we want to loop animation. So select node and loop animation. Let's go ahead and go back. And now what we can do is drag it and create a new state. And this will be our walk slash uh, run. So if we start moving, we will transition from the idle to walk and run, basically. So let's go ahead and double click in here. And what we want to do is find the new locomotion blend space that we have just created and drag it over here. Now, depending on the speed, the animations will change. The thing is that we have to change this dynamically depending on the player's uh, speed in game. So we want to do is right click and promote to a variable, basically create a new variable. Great. So later on, we will go ahead and, you know, uh, assign it a runtime. Let's go back. And now what we want to do is go into this transition and double click on it. And what we'll do is just get the, the speed and then make sure that it is greater than one. Zero, sorry. So if the speed is greater than zero, it will mean that the character is currently moving. Great. So let's go back now and drag the walk and run uh, state. And we want to do a new state now. <laughs> so this will be the stop animation. So basically, when the character stops uh, walking or running or whatever it's doing, it will play this nice animation, which is just like a simple stop animation real quick. And it just feels much better, like much more fluid and vivid. Um, you will see how it looks better later. So now, first of all, let's enter into the stop animation and let's drag it in. So in our case, it was the walk stop. Now you're probably wondering, well, if we're running and we play a walk stop animation, it might not look very good. So maybe we have to change the animation to run stop and then also walk stop depending on who we're walking. No, 
with my test, I have actually found out that just using this single walk stop uh, just looks much better. So we're running and then we play walk stop. It feels more natural. I don't know why, but it just does. So we don't have to worry about that. Let's go back uh, into this scheme. And now in the transition, we want to open it up. I want to make sure that the whole get speed is less or equal than zero. So basically, if our speed is pretty much no, we have stopped moving. We want to play the stop animation. And now from stop, we want to go back to idle once it's completed. Now let's set the, the transition and we actually don't need to put any condition. We just need to set this tick over here, which is automatic rule based on sequence. This just means that as soon as this animation finishes playing, it will automatically just go into idle. So there's no condition. Once it finishes, it will just go to here. Great. So there's two more things I want to do into these transitions. We want to select it and then the duration, I'm going to put it into 0.3 and then the mode will be on cubic. So the blend settings, it just makes it a bit more smoother. And in the stop to idle, again, this will be 0.4 and then the mode will be cubic. Okay, great. So now we can compile and save. So now what we want to do is go back into the main and then grab. And we want to get this locomotion, drag it and make a cache. So select it and this will be locomotion. And now you're probably wondering what is a cache? Well, a cache is basically just a space of memory. So imagine that we are saving this locomotion animations in a pen drive that we can later go ahead and use. So what we want to do now is create another state machine and you will see why in a second. So this state machine will be the main state machine. And here will basically contain all of the different uh, state locomotions. So for example, the normal unarmed locomotion, the crouch locomotion, the um, whatever, the swimming locomotion later on, you know, whatever we want. So we want to now plug in into the output post, but what we want to do is add the default slot. And the default slot is basically just the slot uh, or the animation space that the animation montages will play and the animation montages are just animations that plays um, basically from blueprints so yeah don't worry about it we'll see it later on but basically the main graph is what we want to enter right now and on here we just want to create a new state and this will be the unarmed, unarmed locomotion and we just want to enter in here and we can just pass the cache so basically we are having everything more tidy. We're using this pen drive. <laughs> I don't like calling it pen drive, but I think it, you understand it better if I call it like that. So we're using this space of memory, this cache, this pen drive, as on here, as a state. So really inside on here, we are passing this whole uh, scheme, but only in one single node, which is just much better. All right, so now this is what we need right now for our main. If I compile, you'll see that the animations now start playing. Great, and now if I were to set the speed over here into uh, 500, you will see how it starts running. So, things are working. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just set it to zero, and we'll go back. And you saw how actually um, the, the stop animation plays. So, just take a look. See how it played the stop animation? So, really cool. All right, so, now let's go ahead and sign it. So, let's go and enter our third-person character blueprints. Let's go into third-person uh, blueprints third person character and we want to go into the viewport select our mesh in the character mesh here now into animation class we want to put our new avp RB, RG, uh, rpg character my god i don't know how to talk and you can see the new animations are playing if i press play nothing happens <laughs> the things that we have to go ahead and assign this speed depending on the player's uh, actual speed when we play the game so for this we can go into the event graph and here from the character, basically the owner of this animation blueprint, we can get the velocity. And they want to do for our variable is just say vector length. So we want to convert this uh, vector, which is just uh, x, y, and z, into a nice float so we can just pass it into speed. So don't worry about this node exactly. It's just passing a, a vector into a float. So nice numbers basically, okay? Anyway, so now if we press play, now we can go ahead and walk and stop. And when we stop, place the stop animation and stop. Great, so everything is working. Now we can move on into jumping because we are not playing animations of jumping or falling. Let's go ahead and save everything. Ctrl Shift S. Save a lot, guys. Just in crazy crashes or whatever. Always every certain 
time save okay let's go back into our uh, animation blueprint we want to go into the uh, main uh stay machine and on here we're gonna basically set up the jump uh i don't know how we can call it just jump states i guess so what we want to do is right click go to create a new state and it's going to be the jump so this is going to be our jump animation let's go ahead and enter and now we can just basically find the jump and just plug it in great simple as that now what we want to do is get the jump and drag it over here into the left create a new state and this will be the falling and now we can go ahead and enter and now we can get ahead and find the falling animation now again this is a loop animation so we want to select it and say loop animation now basically don't worry about the errors it's because of the transition <coughs> but the thing is that i am basing off uh, this uh, jump scheme from the normal template from third person because i think it's great it just does what it is so it's very simple now <coughs> what i want to do is go ahead and create a state alias so this is gonna be basically to falling so this like if it was a shortcut so instead of manually going ahead and plugging all this into here we can use this uh alias which is just like a shortcut like if it was just teleporting animations um so we can have everything more organized okay so if we set the to falling we want to be able to go from jump um to sorry to jump and falling if we are in the normal locomotion so if we are playing the un unarmed locomotion and we accomplish the condition that we're gonna put in a second we will go ahead and jump or whatever let's go ahead and go to jump up here and what we want to use go ahead and double click and create a new variable this will be is falling okay and it will be a boolean so now you can just drag it and say hey if we are falling we're gonna go into jump i'm gonna do exactly the same into falling over here let's drag it enter it and say hey if we are falling you go into this animation over here now we want to do something different into the jump um conditions go ahead and open it real quick and what we have to do is basically create a new uh variable that's going to be the velocity and this is going to be type vector so this a bit different as the speed as it will contain also the direction so now the things that we can go ahead and drag it right click split it and we can have all the axes in uh, individually so what we want to do is get a z which is basically the up and down vector and say hey if is greater than 100 and go ahead and uh, con uh, hold control and then drag it you can also move the pins so basically if we are falling and our velocity instead is greater than 100 we want to play the jump animation but if not we want to directly just play the falling so you will see what that does in a second i, I will go ahead and cover it and explain it but basically what we want to do right now is go into here and select this jump to falling and this will be an automatic rule so as soon as the jumping finishes you go to falling great so a lot of talking but let's implement this so what we have to do is create a new state alias this is like the other side of the shortcut and this will be to land so always happens the same i don't know how to type so we select it we want to be able to go to land if we are from falling or jumping and as soon as this condition completes we can continue so we're gonna have and create a new state this will be the land animation so i want to open the land and then we want to search land and then put it over here great now we want to go out and we want to go into this transition and we're gonna say well if falling is not boolean so if it's basically not true we will go ahead and just play the land animation and now we go ahead and make another transition so like this and it's going to be an automatic rule based on sequence basically as soon as the landing animation finishes we'll go back into the normal locomotion so we have to do one more thing and it's the invent graph fill up these variables so the velocity is going to be very simple let's drag it over here and get the velocity over here from this node which we already had great and now what we want to do is go ahead and add this node which is <coughs> sorry about the guffing guys it just initialize event blueprint initialize animation this is like the start of the animation blueprint the begin play so we want to get this node copy and paste it it's basically in the owner i want to cast 
to the third person character so we'll basically access all the variables that our player has and now what we want to do is right click and promote it to variable and i'm going to change the name into character so basically just at the start referencing this character and the thing is that we don't have to do it on the update because there's no necessity we can just do it one time on the start and that's it more clean code and better optimized as casting does not really consume anything but it's just better to have it only one time at every certain often okay so what we want to do right now is get the character variable and we want to get the character if i know how to spell character character there we go movement component let's go down sorry not, not component just movement go down and there we go and now we can get uh it's falling and then if it's falling we can just pass it over here so we will get our variable and then pass it over here great so let's go put some comments over here so select everything put it over here so this will be get get speed and velocity velocity and then this will be um is falling great so now it's unorganized great so now we can go ahead and test all this so if i save i can go here and if i jump i'll play nothing <laughs> so what is happening you're probably wondering well let's go into the uh, animation blueprint and let's go back into the name scheme so the land animation the thing is that if we double click and open it, you will see that it has this thing which is an additive animation. So basically this animation is designed to play on top of another one, which is basically in our case will be the normal locomotion. So let's go ahead and close it. And things like in here we are calling it normally, but we have to call it as an additive animation. So let's go ahead and drag this and you say add additive. So apply additive, there we go. And now we want to Hold Ctrl and move it into the additive space, leave the alpha 1, and the normal base will be basically the cache of the locomotion. So this land animation will play on top of the locomotion. And it will just feel much smoother because basically it is like if it's landing but at the same time it's continuing to, to walk and we have a speed. Anyway, it's just much better. Now if we press play, you will see that we can jump and then it will place the land animation. Very subtle. You can see. So the things that the jump animation is not playing. So we need to go into here. We need to go into the main. And the reason is that the the priority number, the transition, is the same. So we have to make sure that the priority number on here is two. So from to falling to falling, it has to be two. So now if I jump, you can see that now it jumps and then falls. Great, so we have a nice locomotion system. It has top animation, so it feels a bit smoother. We can jump, land, etc. Great, so this is the extreme basic of our locomotion. Now, we're gonna basically add crouching. Let's go ahead and do that. So, Ctrl Shift S to save everything as till now. And let's go into our folder, RPG character animations. Let's go into crouch. And now we're gonna go ahead and create a new animation uh, blend space. Right click, go into animation. Legacy plane space 1D. Again, select the character skeleton and that's gonna be uh, crouched. Let's go ahead and open this up. So, again, it's gonna be very similar to the other normal locomotion, but with crouch animations. So, this is gonna be the speed, the minimum zero, about the maximum. This time it's gonna be 350 because, I mean, when we're crouching, we're gonna be slower. So, instead of going to until 500, only to 350. So now we're going to search for crouch and now this time we will add the idle animation onto the left because we're not going to do any fancy transitionings and stuff. Things simple for the crouch. And now into walk, we can go ahead and put it into the right. Now of course, we're doing the basics on here, but as we go, the advanced locomotion system will grow and we will have many more fancy stuff and maybe animation warping and stuff. So we'll see. Anyway, so as you can see, as time uh, velocity increases, we will start walking. Now, the thing is that the animation for walking is moving. So the thing is that it has room motion. Let's go ahead and open it up. And we need to enable room motion and then say force foot lock. So now it will be in place. It will not be moving. So now I can go back into the animation blueprint. Sorry, uh, blend space. And now you can see that it stays there. Great. So what we have to do is go back into our animation blueprint. 
and go back into the great and in graph okay out of the main so now we want to go ahead and create a new state machine so this will be our crouched great so we want to create a new uh, cache pose and again this will be crouched and there we go let's pull this a bit up <clears throat> so let's go ahead and enter and it's gonna be very simple we're just gonna have a uh, crouched locomotion okay what is this crow my goodness i don't know how to type there you go so now in here we can just pass the uh, crouch plan space that we have just created okay and then we just pass the speed that we already have the variable assigned and everything great so you can also uh, hover everything and then press Q and it will align. So that's very handy. So now we have the uh, crouch locomotion set up, but now we have to use it. So let's go back into our main. I will have to create a new state, which will be crouched uh, locomotion. So now we can go and create the transitions. So from unarmed locomotion to crouch and then from crouch to unarmed. So first of all, let's start with the uh, unarmed to crouch. And we have to do is create a new variable, which is is uh, crouched. And then this will be type uh, boolean, sorry, so true or false. So drag it and get it. So if this is true, it will go ahead and transition. And I will do the opposite in the go going back. So get is crouched, not boolean. So if it's false, we will go back. Great, so compile and save. Now we want to go into the Venn graph. And I want to do is go after here. So we go. Uh, we want to get is crouch set it over here. Set it. And now <clears throat> what I want to do is go into the third person cat's blueprint. I'm gonna create a new variable. It's gonna be uh, crouched. Oh my god! I don't know how to spell. Crouched. Great. So basically, we're gonna get again the character. I'm gonna get crouched. So the one that we have just created, not the character one, but the one our custom one that we have created. And now we just want to drag it in, and it's gonna be get uh, crouched. Okay, just move it over here, and perfect. Let's go ahead and align this. It's a bit more beautiful. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we need to enable and disable this crouch. So what we're gonna do is go into the third person character, go into the Venn graph, and let's start making some code. So what we're going to do is just create a new input action. So let's go into content, third person, input, actions. Let's go right click, um, input, input action, and then EA underscore, and it's gonna be crouch. Let's go ahead and open this up, and we don't have to change anything of it. Let's go in closer, let's go back, and now we need to go into our collection. So this is a list of all the inputs that we have. So we have to basically just add the new one that we have created, which is gonna be crouch. And now here we can start pressing the keys. So we select this icon, now you can press any key in your keyboard, which in our case will be left control, and it will assign. So great. So now we can close this, and now we can use this EA crouch. Now of course, make sure that of course is adding the mapping context at the beginning play, but if you're using the third person template as you should if you're following this RPG series, it's already great. So now what we can do is go from it started and then do a flip flop. So basically this will do one thing and it's that, well, every time that this is called, the first time it will do this. And then the second time it will do this, the third time this, fourth time this. It will just, every time it's called, it will shift between one of those. So what we want to do now is set is crouch to true. And then in the other one set to Pause. So now we can pow, we can press play, we can walk in our normal blend space, but when we <laughs> left um, control, we get this. So what is happening right now? <coughs> well, uh, it did shift, so that's great. But the thing is that in our crouched locomotion, we did not apply the cachet. So we need to find the crouched cachet. And now when we press control, now it goes into Crouch, so you can see how cool it's looking. Great. 
So let's go and do some more things over here so it can feel a bit better. And what we're going to do is get the character moon component and first of all set the max walk speed into 350 like we said in the um, plant space. And now in here, we will do basically the opposite. We'll put it back into 500 and we can use the same connector here. Great, so now it will go ahead and uh, move a bit slower and it feels just better. Now, a thing that I have noticed in Assassin's Creed Origins is that basically the camera gets a bit more far away when you're crushed. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go here and what we can do is get the camera boom and then set um, length, set target arm length. Uh, right now it is at 400 I believe. Yes, so instead of 400 we're going to put uh, 550 for example. And I can copy and paste this and then this will be back to 400. Great, so now we can plug in the camera boom here. Ctrl Shift S to save everything until now. Press play. Now here you will see that the camera goes a bit uh, further away. Now the thing is that it doesn't look very good because it's snapping. Um, we don't want that. We want it to be smooth. We want to interpolate with a smooth transition. Let's go back here and let's make some space before we set the arm length. And we can get any of these connectors and you say add timeline. And this will be our crouch cam distance timeline. Great. So hold control. That's going to be play from start. And then get this out. And this will go reverse from start. So we use the same timeline for both. And the thing is that we can use this trick, which is just reverse it to go back to normal. So we can now delete this other one. And we can just use this. So we need to enter this timeline and add a new track. And this will be a flow track. And this will be our length or cam length to be more specific. And now this is the time that we will take. In our case, it will be just one second. Now you can customize everything as you want, uh, you know, so maybe we want to take it two seconds, you can, or 0.3 seconds, you can. So you can change it. I, I would put it at one. I recommend to put it at one, but if you want to change anything, you can. So go ahead and right click in any place and add a key. And now we just need to set the time to zero and the value to zero. And then we want to click again any place and then I set the time to one and value to one. Value to one and time to one. Now we can press this to one and then we have a simple transition where they would just interpolate between two. You can get fancy and add more ones to make it a curve and stuff, but I would just leave it like that. And now we have the calm length here. So we can drag it and use this lurp float uh, node. I want to get the A, hold control and put it into the alpha. So basically it will go from 400 to 550 okay so basically now this will be our new arm length and the thing is that if we reverse it it will go from 550 to 400 so it is exactly what we want so we compile and save and go into here you can see that when i crouch we have a nice zooming in and out look at that it looks so cool oh yes all right so now we can go ahead and stop so we're gonna make the last thing in this video i think it's a bit too long but i just want to add this last thing and why i have a watch beeping let's just wait a second until this watch stops beeping so we are going to add leaning and it will just improve so much the locomotion it will make it smoother like the character when it turns it is not like so stiff it will like bend in into the side that it's bending it is much better and as has great again has it so we have to add it all right so what we're going to do is go and create some animations from uh for the leaning but don't worry we're not gonna make anything complex we are gonna use a very handy tool in unreal engine so let's go into characters mannequins animations and many and now we'll see the run forward animation that we're using so what we want to do is now find over here the other oh, I want. Okay, let's go back here. Animations, many here. So we want to ah, come on, <laughs> many. There we go. So we want to find the RPG character folder, and you will see locomotion. So actually, first let's go into animations and create a new lean folder. Okay, so here we'll place the new animations. So go back into the many. I want to do now is get the run forward animation and drag it into lean but be careful don't move it only 
copy okay so now we go into lean we will have it here so now this will be lean and let's say it's gonna be uh underscore left and i'll duplicate it and this will be lean underscore right and uh, if i spell it correctly let's start with left so let's go ahead and pause it okay pause it and then drag it into the start position of the timeline okay so the first thing that we have to do is make it as an additive you remember that we already saw the how the landing was additive well we're gonna do the same with our leaning so we'll play the you know the locomotion behind it but it will play this leaning towards it so what we want to do is go into the um, additive and in type and we're gonna say mesh space it's gonna be a bit different than the landing one it's gonna be mesh space and then the post type is gonna be scaled okay and now in here we want to find our original run animations go into run i want to go into the mm run forward okay great so now what we want to do is save this and we want to go into the skeleton tree and on here we want to select the pelvis okay we don't want to select the root because i'm not in the animation this will be overridden but we want to go into the pelvis which is our next um top bone and what we want to do is go into our rotation tool okay over here and make sure they have a snapping enabled on the rotation of 10 degrees so now what we want to do is rotate this character 10 degrees into the left in this axis over here so in our left will be his left okay so where we are looking at his left so in our case will be to our right so what we want to do is get this and just like that minus 10 degrees and now what we want to do is press this plus key over here is a keyframe and then we can save it and now when we press play you'll see that it's just playing um leaning we can close it and you will see that when we open it again it's still leaning great so we will do exactly the same with the right but bending into the place let's go ahead and open this pause it all to the left and go first into as details in the additive type to mesh and then again scaled and then find our original mm run forward and now go into the skeleton tree Go into the pelvis with the rotation tool, snapping, and 10 degrees. Now, this time will be to his left, so then again in our right, in our, in our left. So, 10 degrees to our left, to his right. And then again, remember, plus key and then save and then close it. Great. So now we have to make another blend space. <laughs> yeah, loving blend spaces. Right click, animation, legacy, blend space. Again, with the same skeleton. And this will be the lean capital L blend space. Let's go ahead and open this up. We'll go back to as details. Now this will be basically the well lean value. <laughs> okay, let's just say lean value. So this will be in degrees. So the um, minimum will be 45 and the maximum 45. Okay. And now we want to get our lean animations and our left to be on the left side of the scheme. And the right on the right side so now if i hold control you see how it leans depending on the value now if you want to have a more exaggerated value uh leaning and stuff you can change the degrees and stuff and the animation and so on but i do recommend sticking with these values because i have already tested it and it looks pretty fine so now we can save and close it so now we need to go back into our animation blueprint yes again into the mayhem so <coughs> what we have to do now is go into our uh, locomotion graph i want to go into the walk on run uh, state so as you remember we made the animations additive so we can just drag it and say apply additive mesh space so this time it will be mesh space okay so the base will be this animations running but this time the additive will be our leaning uh, blend space go ahead and drag it into the additive space we will leave the alpha into one and now what we want to do is right click and create this into the value and now this will be the yaw delta and now there's a thing that we have to do and just uh, go ahead and drag this and then multiply it by minus one basically we want to invert um the linear okay because so if not it will be to the other side great so now we want to compile and save now the thing is that nothing will happen because well if we press play, we are not saying that uh, Yo Delta is running at zero. 
Now, if I were to put it in 45 and compile, you will see that now it doesn't do anything. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Yo Delta, yeah, it, sh it should change. Okay, don't worry, don't worry about it. The thing is that uh, we need to apply it uh, while we are playing the game. Uh, sorry, uh, minus one, not point one. Sorry about that. Now we can test it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Make sure that you don't make make uh, any mistakes like that. Okay. So now you will see that now it's leaning. Okay, you see that. Great. Set it back to zero. And now we want to go into the bank graph. Okay. So we want to go here and make the leaning. So we want to get the jaw delta, drag it and set it over here. Log it in. So what we want to do is get our character. I want to get the actor rotation. Okay. And now what we want to do is go ahead and get this and make a delta rotator. And basically, this will be our B. So let's go ahead and control and drag it here. And the A, we're going to go ahead and create a new variable, which will be our last rotation. Last frame rotation. So basically our rotation in the last frame. So this is basically just, we're going to basically interpolate it in a nice smoothly way. And we will need to know the last uh, rotation in the last frame in order to uh, basically transition from that last frame into the new one because if not it will be snappy and we don't want that Okay Now I want to do is right click and split it So we have all the different vectors I want to get the jaw and we want to divide this number by the Delta time now We want to go ahead and right click promote this variable Delta time Okay, now the thing is that we have to assign this Delta time and the great thing is that we have it over here so we just want to put this into the left Drag the delta time and plug it in here, and this will be the delta time. All right? As simple as that. Actually, we can just, I think, just plug it on here. Yeah, well, that's right. Okay. And now what we want to do is divide this one more time. But this time, this will be our lean intensity. So I have found that 10 is a pretty good value. Now, if you change the value, you can test it out to see if more and less leaning is better. But 10 is pretty good. So now we want to interpolate a float. So <coughs> this will be our target, okay? And our current will be our current um, jaw delta. What did I just do? Uh, okay, I just swapped the, the values, okay. Jaw delta, okay? And what we want to do right now is the speed set it into 10 again, okay? Now this will be the, the speed that it will um, change the lean, okay? Again, you can play uh, with the settings. And then delta time, again, we'll place not not your delta, delta time. I know this is very confusing, but hey, and this is just advanced calculations, so don't worry if you didn't really understand uh, like the core aspect of it, but a lot of different vectors and values. <laughs> and now what we want to do is get the last frame rotation and basically fill it with this last frame rotation over here. Okay, and there we go. Sorry, what the, what the, what? No, <laughs> the get active rotation. Of course, if not, it will be the same one. We want to get this one, okay. Um, but you can just double click in order to add this little note, so it just looks a bit better. Now we can just select everything, press C, lean, uh, yeah, just calculate, calculate lean. What is wrong? I don't know how to type. Okay, calculate lean. There we go. So now we can go ahead and compound save. And if I press play, you guys didn't want to walk. I go ahead and lean. <laughs> so cool. Look at that. Looking so cool. And it just makes it so cool. I don't see. All right, right now, maybe it doesn't feel like too crazy. But when you start getting all the aspects, uh, when we start adding um, the vaulting with the parkour system, and we change the mannequin to an actual character and you start getting like uh, equipables and uh, of um, overriding animation states on top of him it will start looking so 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 cool like trust me so we're gonna make two more things over here and it's first of all <coughs> i'm gonna change the character to money basically the things that i always use um queen for my tutorials so so to just change it up to this series i'm gonna uh, change it to money and now we're gonna basically find these materials over here. I'm gonna duplicate it. Um, basically, this many, many, 
with two ends uh, underscore um, let's make the character blue uh, yeah let's make it blue okay and then we need to get this one money uh, underscore blue two so basically we just want to <coughs> sorry about the coughing open this the this materials and we want to go into the tint so make sure it's enabled I want to basically make it a bit blue so now we can get this uh, hex value and then uh, copy it and save it close this and open the money to enable tint go into here and then to this hex value paste it say ok and then save it and it will go ahead and save great now we can go into the character and now in this time we can put the money blue one and money blue two and now we have a what what is happening <laughs> oh did, did i solve okay the other way around <laughs> sorry about that two ends money two and money one there we go i did the the other way so let me just change the name into money uh so we have to so yeah this is the thing we have we need to change this temporarily into three so now this will be two and then this will be back to one okay so now we have a cool character it's a bit different to spice it up until we have a proper you know assassin's creed character so yeah we, guys, we have some leaning in really cool we have some top animations jumping uh, we have crouching as you can see like everything is looking absolutely amazing so if you want to go ahead and set up a source control for this game so basically everything will be in a server and we pull changes just in case something goes wrong and you can recover your last version or you want to collaborate with different people go ahead and let me know in the comments and i can go ahead and just make a quick episode showing how to create the source control and if you don't know how what is a source control it's basically managing everything okay in the cloud so we can have some uh comment commits they're called comments and it's just a version of your pride in github for example and then we can just tune in back and forward so that's it guys if you enjoyed the tutorial i would really appreciate if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel i have lots of unreal engine tutorials so go ahead and check them out i'm very excited to continue with this incredible rpg series so go ahead and support it guys because it's gonna be massive and incredible so now yes with all i said join my discord server and basically show the progress that you're making you know uh, i want i want to see your progress in the rpg and with all i said bye bye